I'm inventing a new pie in my head. I'm calling it, I don't want Earl's baby pie. Baby screaming its head off in the middle of the night and ruining my life pie. New York style cheesecake, brandy brushed. And Jenna special strawberry chocolate oasis pie. You got that? I got that. It's downright expert, a thing of beauty. How each flavor opens itself one by one, like a chapter in a book. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babbage, where this week we're taking a look at the pies from Waitress. Now, Adrian Shelley, the writer and director of Waitress, was tragically killed back in 2006, and since this is the last episode to come out of the old kitchen, I thought it'd be cool to donate a portion of the profits to the Adrian Shelley Foundation, a nonprofit that helps support women filmmakers. There's a link in the video description where you can contribute as well. But now it's time to get down to the business of making pies. Now, we've made pie crust a few times on this show. We're just making a basic food processor butter pie crust you can check out how to make that via the link appearing in the upper right hand corner of your screen right now. As always, once we've formed the dough into a sort of pie crust patty cake, we're going to wrap it tightly in plastic wrap and refrigerate for at least 30 minutes, ideally an hour before pounding and rolling out. I should probably also tell you what we're making today. We're making bad baby pie, or I don't want Earl's baby pie, which is a very simple quiche with ham and brie cheese. So once you have pressed, not stretched, your pie crust into its cooking vessel, we're going to decoratively crimp the edges of our pie crust into the classic wavy thing pattern, and then we're going to chill again for for 30 minutes. This is going to help prevent the crust from shrinking too much when we par bake it, which we're gonna do right now. Line it with foil and fill with pie weights, or if you don't have any, just some brown rice or beans will do, and go ahead and par bake for 10 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, during which time we're going to make our quiche filling. The only way I'm gonna deviate from her recipe is adding a little bit of cream to the beaten eggs. Then we're going to let our perfectly prepared par baked pie crust cool off for about 30 minutes before layering in some wedges of brie cheese, the same way she does in the movie, and a few hearty handfuls of ham. Pour in the egg filling, seasoning with a little bit of salt and pepper, making sure everybody's pretty evenly covered. And then I've got a baking sheet that I've been preheating in that 425 degree oven. I've lowered the oven temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm baking this guy for about 35 minutes or until set. Then I'm going to let it cool for maybe 30, 45 minutes until it's still warm and cut myself a big old slice. And as you can see, the way the brie is stacked makes it pretty localized to the center of the pie, but you're not gonna hear me complaining. But alas, it's not going to join the clean plate club because it needs something else, some chives, some garlic, some caramelized onions. Give it a try yourself, get creative, and just pick out the ham if it doesn't turn out well. Next up, we're going for old horny Joe's personal favorite, chocolate strawberry oasis pie. We're gonna start by making a chocolate crumb crust out of precisely 25 finely processed Oreos and five tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. Mix until it resembles wet sand and begin to press into your removable bottom tart pan. Some ramekins from our Amelie episode are perfect for pressing it into all the nooks and crannies. We wanna get this nice and even and not too thick. We want this to be a chocolate pie, not a chocolate crust pie. We wanna set this crust's shape so we're going to par bake it for about eight minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, during which time we're going to prepare our filling. We're combining one and a quarter cups of heavy cream with a dash of instant espresso powder, a dash of allspice, and a dash of cinnamon to account for the exotic spices described by Old Joe. We're bringing that to a bare simmer and then adding it to nine ounces of chopped high quality chocolate. We're going to slowly combine these. You want to whisk slowly because you don't want to introduce too many air bubbles. Don't worry, this is sped up footage. I'm not actually whisking that fast. Then once everything's nice and homogenous, we're adding four tablespoons of unsalted butter cut in small pieces. Again, whisking gently to combine, and at this point it should be cooled off enough that we can add two large, lightly beaten eggs. Again, whisking slowly. Again, air bubbles. And there we go, we've got our chocolate filling. It's gonna be a nice, rich, almost ganache-like filling that we're gonna pour into our cooled pie crust. And then to finish off the last few of those dastardly bubbles, pop them with a skewer as they rise to the top. We're then putting this guy into a 250 degree Fahrenheit oven for 30 to 35 minutes until jiggly but set with light cracks formed on its surface. While we let this guy cool completely on a rack, we're going to make a simple chocolate glaze to hold our strawberries in place. We're combining three tablespoons of hot butter with two ounces of chopped chocolate covering and letting get all melty and stuff for 30 seconds, uncovering and whisking to combine. And then for a little extra sheen, we're going to add a tablespoon of hot water. Again, whisking to combine. Make sure to whisk slowly because bubbles. We're then pouring that over top of our completely cooled cake, spreading nice and evenly over the top, and then beginning to shingle on sliced strawberries. This is, after all, chocolate strawberry oasis pie, so make it look nice like a 
Desert Rose. And to extract this pie from its mold, simply put it on top of a large can and pull down the fluted sides. And at long last, it's time to cut ourselves a piece. That's looking good, like chocolate pie, not chocolate crust pie. And let's give it a taste. Now, I know you were probably worried about the powdered espresso, but that just sort of amplifies the chocolatey flavor. It doesn't make it coffee-like, which would be weird with strawberries. And I gotta say, I highly recommend it, and it's joining the Clean Plate Club off camera. Last up, and probably my favorite, is a New York-style cheesecake with pecans and brandy. We're gonna start by making our graham cracker crust, processing together six whole graham crackers along with two and one-third ounces of brown sugar, processing until fine, and then adding two and one-half ounces all-purpose flour, seasoning with a little bit of salt, and processing once again before making things moist with seven tablespoons of melted butter that we're gonna process together until it reaches the consistency of wet sand. And now we're gonna butter down a spring form, a nine-inch high-walled spring form pan to be precise, before adding our graham cracker crust and tamping down again using a ramekin until even and flat. And we're gonna par-bake this in a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven for 12 to 14 minutes or until it just starts turning a lovely brown. Now time to make the cheesecake filling. We're cutting up two and a half pounds or five whole things of full fat cream cheese into a stand mixer and we're adding five and a half ounces of sugar and a teaspoon of salt, making sure our Stand mixer is plugged in and blending for about a minute until thoroughly combined. We're gonna be doing a lot of stages of blending because the more we blend the filling, the smoother it's gonna be. So scrape down the paddle and the sides of the bowl, add another five ounces of sugar and mix on medium speed again for about a minute. Scrape down the sides again and now we're gonna add a solid third of a cup of sour cream along with the squeezed juice of one half of one lemon and a nice heaping teaspoon of vanilla extract. Blend to combine, medium speed, about a minute. Now we're gonna start adding eggs. We're starting with two large egg yolks. Blend for a minute, scrape down the sides, and then we're gonna start adding six whole eggs, two at a time, blending for a minute each, and then scraping down the sides, rinse and repeat. It's gonna take a while, so we can just make some pleasant conversation in the meantime. Uh, who do you think is hotter, Roz or Daphne? During which season did Fraser really start to go downhill? I only know how to talk about Fraser. Okay, now that we've got our Fraser pleasantries out of the way, we've got a nice, smooth cheesecake filling that we're going to take one additional step to make sure it's extra smooth by passing it through a fine mesh sieve. And then it's time to finally pour it into our pre-prepared crust. And I, oh shit, I forgot to butter down the sides of the thing. So I'm gonna meticulously pour out and clean out the sides and then make sure you brush down your springform pan with an extra layer of butter before pouring in your cheesecake filling. And as has become the theme of this episode, bubbles are the enemy. They can cause your cheesecake to crack, so run a fork over the top and pop them as they rise to the surface. Then we're baking this guy slowly at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes, taking it out to, again, pop any bubbles that have risen to the surface. I will not have a cracked cheesecake. Then we're putting this guy back in the 200 degree oven for up to two and three quarter hours until its internal temperature reads 165. As you can see, there's a few stab points on here. It doesn't matter because I'm going to be covering this up with pecans, despite my ranting about cracks. We're then blasting this in a 500 degree Fahrenheit oven for about six minutes and up to 12 until it gets a lovely burnished brown top. We're going to quickly run a paring knife around the outside of the cake to make sure it separates easier later and letting cool for three hours. At this point, we're ready to unmold the cake, but we're not ready to eat it yet, sadly enough. We're going to wrap it in plastic wrap and fridge it for an addition four hours. And now that you've spent the better part of a day making a cheesecake, let's pour ourselves some brandy. I'm kidding, we're just brushing this down with brandy because that's what the pie genius Jenna did in the movie, and then we're topping it with some toasted and chopped pecans. Pecans. Peca pecans. And now, finally, we get to enjoy the fruits of our labor, a towering slice of rich, velvety, creamy New York-style cheesecake with an, I would say, shockingly crisp crust. I couldn't taste the brandy at all. Maybe a brandy syrup would be better, but this was absolutely fabulous. I really recommend you try this one. Get creative with sauces and toppings as we enjoy another worthy entry to the Clean Plate Club. Off camera.